me, mental wellness means being aware of yourself, knowing what your triggers are, knowing what uh, helps you be the best person that you can be, being aware of your past and life experiences. I think that mental wellness is someone who is very aware of themselves and how they feel in certain situations and they're able to avoid things that are unhealthy for them. I think for me, mental wellness um, means taking care of yourself like somebody might take care of their body. Like, you know, we all, we all know somebody or personally do have a gym membership. Um, a lot of people, uh, you know, will go work out before work in the morning or before school or um, do laps on the track just to get their, their body, you know, fit. And, you know, every spring it's beach season. But um, not a lot of people um, really think about mental health in the way that they think of their body. Um, I think it's really important to, to really focus on your brain, whether that's reading books or seeing a counselor or just really paying attention. Um, I think mental um, wellness and mental health are, you know, one and the same. Um, mental wellness to me, for me personally, it's like a huge part of my life because it's like something I personally dealt with and I know a lot of people do too and I feel like we don't stress enough about it. If someone's like physically sick and they're unable to go to work or school, it's excuse, but if someone's mentally not feeling well, it's people don't see it as an excuse, you know, so. Mental wellness is something that is in today's society a lot and I think it's something serious and that we shouldn't take lightly and we should be talking about it way more. To me, mental wellness is one of the most important things you can do. We talk about physical wellness, we talk about uh, needing to take care of our bodies. To take care of our mind is something that people don't do enough. I know for me personally, if I don't spend time reflecting and thinking on my own experiences and again kind of what's going on inside of myself uh, that affects not only my mind it affects my relationships it affects the people around me I think that's true for everyone if you're not aware of your mental health then or your mental wellness then you're going to start to go down roads you don't want to go down um, mental wellness to me is uh, extremely important um, I mean I have a uh, you know growing up I had a really hard childhood um, <clears throat> and, and, you know, since then, life hasn't been very easy. So, you know, mental wellness is something that I've had to really pay attention to. Um, you know, I've struggled with depression for most of my life. And um, just some other, you know, deep-rooted um, issues, some might say. But, um, and it's just important to me to stay on top of those things. You know, I see a counselor. Um, I take antidepressants. And I really try to... Uh, I try to read as much as I can. I try to focus on making, um, making time for myself and doing things I want to do. Um, you know, I have, a, I have a son and I have a wife. Um, you know, I have a bunch of kids that I love at youth group. And uh, I just want to make sure that I'm the best me for myself and for everybody else. Because if I'm not the best me, um, then, you know, they're not getting, they're not getting what they need. Um, mental wellness is as important as physical wellness because you can't you can't function properly if your mind isn't there. Uh, I think social media can be a good thing and a bad thing um, for our mental well-being. I think it's a great way to stay in touch with others and um, you know, a great way to you know, just connect and, and um, you know, there's a lot of good things that social media is um, around for and it does for us but I think we've heard the term you know the grass is always getting on the other side of the fence or keeping up with the Joneses. I think it's a, social media is unfortunately a really good way to compare yourself to others. Um, I mean, take the 2016 presidential election and how social media played into that. Everybody was, you know, polar this and polar that. Um, you know, there's no middle ground. I feel like we can do that with um, anything. It just seems like social media really magnifies um, things. And if somebody, I think, you know, struggles mentally, let's say they, they don't have a very good self-image, and all they're doing is 
you know, on being on Instagram and seeing all these pictures of, you know, people that they think are better looking or people that they think have better lives than them. You know, when they're comparing themselves, it's really easy to get down. You know, everybody struggles. Um, they might just, they might not just post it on social media. Right? I think social media affects mental wellness because everyone is on social media these days and people are posting negative and positive things on social media, but sometimes it is negative and sometimes that negative can affect someone's like mental wellness and their thought of being. And I think people should just stay positive on social media rather than negative. For me, when I was in school, I was never like had huge groups of friends or, uh, but I always had a core group of like, you know, five people that I was really close with. So for me, my social circles in school helped my mental health just because it gave me people that were nearby that I could talk to, talk, uh, as I say, within those five, maybe I had two friends that I could really sit and talk about what was going on, how I was feeling. And I think having uh, friends outside of your family, outside of your, you know, kind of immediate people that you live with, to have friends that can listen to you and you can process with. Uh, for me in high school and college was huge. Was, it was essential for my mental health to have people that I could process life with. I feel like school is a big factor on mental wellness because school is so stressful sometimes and it can put a lot on your plate at once and you do not know how to handle it sometimes and you just stress out and you feel like you don't have anywhere to go because you have to do that. You have to do school. You have to get the work done. And I think having friends and family and teachers that you were close to, go like talk to them. Like if you can't keep up with the work or you're not going to be able to get stuff done on time, you would go to them. And I feel like that would help a lot. For me, growing up, my family was really helpful with my just mental wellness. We didn't talk about it a whole lot. It wasn't a subject that my parents talked about a lot, but I knew that I was always had a safe place at home. I could always talk with them if something was going wrong. If I was going through uh, a bout of depression, if something was going on at school, I felt like I had people that I could talk to. And if I said that I was, uh, in high school I dealt with some depression, and uh, still do, but I always felt like I had someone that I could talk to that wouldn't look at me and say, well, you just need to get over it or you just need to feel better. So that way, growing up, my family was helpful, and now my family is still helpful. My wife is someone that I process the most with. We're together all the time, so when something is difficult or we're struggling with something, again, we have someone, someone with me all the time that I can talk to and open up with, know that I won't be judged when I start talking about my experiences and how I'm feeling, and she'll ask me questions and help me to process that. So that's, for me, that family has always just been there to ask questions and to support through the any kind of problems that I've been going through and that's attributed a lot to my mental wellness. Family uh, for me plays a big role in my mental wellness. I think um, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is, is pretty much a lot of the counselors that I've seen um, in the past for um, depression which is one of the things that I've struggled with for a long time. You know, some of the some of the questions are kind of a stereotypical therapist questions, like, you know, well, when you were young, how was your, how did your, you know, parents treat you? This, that, and the other thing. You know, definitely growing up, I think it, it played a big role in, in the things that I struggle with today. Um, like I've mentioned, growing up was kind of hard. Um, but on the flip side of things, I have a wife and a son now, um, and they're great. I mean, my wife is a, uh, a wonderful, um, just a wonderful woman. She builds me up. Um, she's a great partner. Um, you know, she is just somebody that I, I cling to and I really um, hold dear to because uh, just she's, she's my best friend. Um, and that helps, you know. Um, she's somebody I can rely on when things get hard. She's somebody I can celebrate with um, when things are good. She's, she's up here with me when I'm here, and she's, she's down here with me when I'm here. Yeah, you know, family has been a, you know, a negative thing and a real positive thing in my mental health.
My family has played a very big role because my dad has always been a part of my life and has always been there for me. Even though I don't like telling him everything, he is always just there to listen and even puts a smile on my face or tells me a joke while I'm having a bad day. And I think he is just a good example for being positive all the time because I never see him down. And my sister is always making me laugh even though I don't see her a lot. She's constantly texting me and FaceTiming me, seeing how I am and that really means a lot to me. I think my parents are very understanding of mental wellness and so when I had concerns of having seasonal affective disorder, my both my mom and my dad were like, they were very understanding of it because my dad happens to have it also. And my mom invested in a sun lamp which really, really helped me. And they're just always trying to make things better, which I am really, really thankful for. And um, yeah, because it's not always easy. My past relationships have both been beneficial to my mental wellness and they have been uh, detrimental to my mental wellness, right? As I, I have had friends and family that have supported me talk through things, who were there to listen to me and process things. I've also had people that their personality just clashed with mine, and when we would try to be together and work together, specifically in a work situation, uh, when we would try to work together, I found I was always just feeling bad after my interactions with this person. And Later on, I realized our expectations for each other were different. How we viewed our relationship was different. And I think in my past relationships, I realized there are some people that will help you and support you. And the fact is, some people will see things differently if you're not careful. Um, that can be hurtful to you and how you're feeling in your life. Um, past relationships have um, definitely had a They've had effects on my mental wellness. You know, I can think of, for example, I had a boss uh, years back who was uh, just, just not a good guy. Um, you know, everything was always negative um, with him. It was kind of why, you know, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Things aren't good enough. Uh, so that, you know, that, that didn't really help. It, wasn't, it didn't make work a good place to be. Uh, you know, I, I've had um, relationships with friends in high school um, that really uh, were just really solid guys. They built me up. We built each other up. And that was a positive, uh, positive thing for my mental health. In fact, I'm, uh, you know, I'm 29 and um, <clears throat> just last weekend, my best friend since, since third grade got married and I was the best man at his wedding. We all stay really close. Um, and, you know, that's been great for mental wellness. I can think of uh, girlfriends that I've had in the past that have been a roller coaster of mental wellness. You know, the ups, the downs that go with, um, you know, typical high school relationships, nothing against high schoolers. You know, you in particular, you're a great guy. Um, but there's just a lot of ups and downs. Um, and, um, you know, I think, I think it's important, uh, and this is a lesson that I learned, I think it's important when you're in a relationship, whether it be a friendship, you know, uh, uh, a you know a relationship with like you know a boss, you know worker, boss employee I should say, you know worker coworker, um, girlfriend boyfriend, um, romantic platonic any kind of relationship. I think it's important that um, one you know you focus on um, yourself a little bit. You know you don't um, you don't become the other person, um, and two you just try to you just try to. Um, not let everything hinge on the other person's um, words and, and actions. Past relationships have, I have learned from my mistakes, honestly. I, it's not, it's like friends, just you don't think you need them in your life anymore and you kind of have to get rid of them and you learn from them. Like sometimes you choose the wrong friends and they do not put a positive feel in your life and just family relationships as well. If, one has broken and that kind of that's worse than a friend is family anything but 
having bad friendships and family relationships really make you learn and shape you to who you are and how you deal with these situations. There were, there was only two, but um, they both ended like pretty badly. Um, and at first I was hurt by it and like it really impacted my mind negatively, but after I kind of got over that, I kind of flipped it around and turned it into empowerment because I started thinking about what I deserve versus what that what was shown to me. So I think in the long run, it has impacted me positively. People affect how I view the world all the time and my outlook on life. I've had friends that have dealt with serious addictions and uh, suicidal thoughts and Having friends close to me deal with that has uh, kind of opened my mind to the, what mental health means, but also kind of the type of people that deal with it. They've made, helped me to be aware of their situation and also make me more thankful for my own situation and to see the good in my life. Uh, in my relationship with my wife, we're both different personalities where uh, I can be more easygoing. She is more, she feels passionately about things the world is a little bit more black and white. And in that relationship, I started to realize that uh, you need to care about things and you need to stand up for things that you believe in. And so I think that just being around people who think differently or who have had different experiences than I have always affects how I view the world. Uh, yeah, I think the people that are in my life right now um, have affected my outlook on life. Um, you know, I can think of, I'll use my wife as an example again. Um, when I met my wife, I was going through a real rough spot. This is, you know, 10 years ago or so. Um, and when I met her, she was just this, this great angel, this positive force for good in my life. And she has since helped direct my, my outlook on life into something a lot more positive. You know, I think of um, some coworkers that I have, um, that on a daily basis, you know, we just have this banter back and forth and we joke. Um, you know, that, that makes things positive. I think, um, I think, you know, my, my friends that I have, um, they affect my outlook on life, but I think, one of the, I think one of the biggest ones for me, the biggest relationship that I have that affects my outlook on life is my son, he's two. Um, he's a little rascal, but, um, it's hard to <clears throat> it's hard to look at him and not be hopeless, not not be unhappy, even when he does something that I'm upset with. You know, I have to, I have to smile and be happy, and that really helps my outlook on life because um, we live in such a world a world where everything is just so negative at times, and it can be so easy to get down and depressed. And I think you know when I get sad, I think of my son. I think oh, I have the coolest kid in the world. Um, and that helps. A lot of my friends, then and now, I feel like changed my life for better and worse. A lot of the friends I had back then, like, I realized they weren't friends. I got out of the hospital and a lot of them left me because I was too depressed or I was, you know, they didn't understand and so, like, I thought at one point, like, no one, I was too hard to love, I was too hard to be friends with, I was, I was a burden, I really felt that, but I realized like later on that those aren't real friends, that friends don't make you feel like that. So a lot of my friends now, a lot of the people in my life now, family-wise, friends-wise, co-worker-wise, you know, like a lot of those people, they make me feel like I actually have a reason to be here. They make me love life, they make me, they put me first for once, and they make me feel like I matter. Like I never doubt that I, I matter when I'm around them. So. For me, when I haven't been okay, when I've gone through depression, when I've just felt like I've been in a dark place, my natural inclination, and I think a lot of people's natural instinct, is to shut down. You don't want to talk to people about it. You just kind of want to curl up, and the motivation to handle it goes away. And I've learned the times where I've gotten over it and have helped through that was when I did open up. I've found often that when I've opened myself up just to talk to someone about what was going on, whether that was a family member, close friend, uh, whatever it was, 
when I opened up to them, I started to feel better. And that's the biggest thing. It's a, you know, I think in dark times, my instinct is shut down. And that's the exact opposite of what you want to do. And I've also had times where I've uh, been on some medication for depression. So, you know, so it gets to that point as well where it's people hearing you and people being around to support you. And then there's also times where another step is needed where there's something that actually needs to happen with medication. So both, I think, are really important and for people to kind of understand that both of those might be necessary. It might be one, it might be the other. Um, but that's how I've, I've done both of those and both have been helpful. I can think back to a period in my life where I was uh, mentally unwell, uh, extremely. Things that things happened in my life um, that I had no control over, and um, you know, I just wasn't in a good spot. I, did, I didn't. I wasn't focusing on mental wellness. Um, I wasn't focusing on really my faith. Things that were important to me. I, I just got down and down, and it was just this downward spiral, deeper and deeper. You know, I isolated. I stopped answering the phone, a friend would call, and I didn't reach out for help. Um, you know, I, I was barely eating. Um, you know, and when I look in the mirror, I was just this, this just, just this skinny, shallow person. You know, my, my eyes were sunk in. And, you know, this was, this was um, about eight years ago or so, so, right after I turned 21, and I started drinking a lot. Um, that was just unhealthy, you know. It was, it was I had, you know, I, I didn't sleep well because of that. Um, you know, there were there were relationships that I had that, you know, were you know, more or less ruined. Um, it was just a real unhealthy thing, and you know, digging myself out of that was, was a long, long road, and a hard road. Um, and I can I can thankfully say I'm in a much better place now. And you know, I don't want to go back there. Uh, it's a scary, lonely place, but it's, it's a place that I know now many people have been. You know, so if, if somebody's in that place, um, it's easy to feel like you're the only one, you know, struggling, which is what I felt like. Uh, but in reality, it's, it's, a, it's a much more common thing. Um, and it's, it's terrifying, it really is. Um... I would especially just talk to someone, or if I really am not in the mood to make up a conversation, I will just be by myself and maybe look at some like things to keep me positive. That's when I'll watch like a YouTube video, or that's when I'll just think to myself, or I'll just I like cleaning when I'm stressed out or I'm not having a good day. I just do something to keep me busy. I don't like doing nothing. And I would definitely go talk to my friends or my family if they're around or just shoot a text to someone that I haven't texted in a while. And that always makes me feel good because most of my friends and family are always there for me. People struggling with mental health, I would say talk to someone about it. I know that that can feel like the hardest thing to do and you wonder if people judge you for it. But the fact is, more people than you, everyone deals with something. The level of it might be different, but everyone is dealing with hurts and pains. Everyone can relate to being in a bad place to some degree. And I think if you can find people that you're comfortable opening up with and people to support you, even if that might be something, even if you want to close yourself off, even if you want to say, uh, I don't want to hear what other people have to say, I think we need to be in community with each other. And you need to learn about yourself. You need to find people who can help you learn who you are, how your experiences have shaped you, and start to kind of get to the root of the problem. And usually getting to the root of uh, mental illness means that you really have to try to understand who am I? Why am I this way? What's made me this way? And once you really start to understand yourself, you can start to work on yourself. But that takes support, that takes people being with you, and it takes you uh, being brave enough, even if you don't feel brave in the moment, to reach out and ask people to help you with that. And for you to be willing to do the work of digging into your own heart and mind as well. But everyone does, everyone deals with it. So I would say, don't be afraid to share that with people. Um, 
You know, in a, in a situation, if I had a friend that was really struggling, a uh, friend or you know, an acquaintance who was really struggling with mental wellness, um, you know, the, I think the biggest, the biggest thing that I could convey, that I would hope that I would be able to convey, is that they're not alone. Um, you know, mental um, illness, and I hate to use the term, you know, mental illness, because it, it's there's such a negative connotation when, when you say that, because it's such a such a common thing, you know, somebody dealing with depression or addiction um, or suicidal tendencies, you know, things that um, things that are really, you know, connected mentally like that, um, they're much more common than it would seem in the world. So I think the biggest thing is, is you're not alone. Um, even in the darkest, even on the darkest of days, even in the darkest of places, there's always light. You know, the sun will come up tomorrow, even, even though it might be a cloudy, stormy, rainy day. Um, the sun will come up. You know, you might, you might have a, a long road in front of you. That's going to be hard. And things might get worse before they get better. Things will get better. Um, you know, I would, I would really... I would hope that I would prepare myself a little bit more before this, but I would, you know, I'd love to tell them just of stories where people were down, you know, on their luck and things got better. You know, I'd share my own story of mental, uh, mental illness. And yeah, you know, I, I would just try to encourage them to look, as hard as it may be, you know, look, um, just look up for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. A lot of people, I feel like a lot of guys too, they have like such a stereotype to be a man, but what does it mean to be a man, you know, like, I feel like everybody should ask for help, everybody should be vulnerable, and I feel like if everyone held a hand out to hold, no one would need a hand, you know, so it's kind of like, oh, and another thing too, it's just to be kind, like, you know, you're going through stuff too, like, I don't know, you might not know what people are going through, so like, if you just compliment someone, if you open, open the door for somebody, that can make somebody's whole day, and like, just be mindful, just be open-minded, everyone's going through a situation, and don't assume everybody's like you. Just kind of, you know, everyone, like someone who's depressed like me, I'm not gonna understand the situation. We're both depressed, but I'm not gonna understand that. I will to a certain extent, but not fully. So, yeah. I would like to say that you're not alone, and it is very important for you not to take this as an easy thing and don't feel like you can't go to anyone because I can guarantee someone will always be there for you. Whether you know them or not, or if you just need to talk to someone, there's always someone around. And there's nothing that will like stop you from being who you are. Like don't stop doing what you love if someone doesn't love it. And if you think that you're not gonna be able to do it anymore, you can. Because I've gone through a lot too and I'm still here. And I think anyone and everyone someone to talk to if they are really in this new situation. It's okay to not be okay. 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 It is okay not to be okay.